Oh, welcome back, and by popular demand, Bumble Root and Peanut are back. But not really popular demand. Demand by one person. Run request for a beginner video, not on the dog, but just a beginner video overall. Don't ask me why. There's like 200 of them out there. Uh, but I aim to please. So, Call of the Wild. Uh, beginner video. What do you... What do you think there, Peanut? Take a paw? Good. Uh, so a good spot to start, most people start, late in lakes. Um, in North America, if you live over North America, it seems to be the, the place to start, because it's got whitetail uh, deer that are, are a fan favorite. Uh, moose, that's a favorite too. Uh, Roosevelt elk is awesome. Uh, black tailed deer, of course. And then it's got coyote, which is familiar. Uh, there's ducks. And I feel like I'm forgetting some. Oh, black bear. And black bear. So, uh, a nice little variety. I think I got them all. Oh, they're little bunnies. Yep, little, little rabbits. Uh, but yeah, so anyways, uh, the basics of the game, of course, is explore the map. Try and get as big a trophy as possible. Uh, it gets pretty complicated. I'm not too sure how much I will go over in the video. Uh, but if you haven't figured it out by now, these little house icons are outposts. You want to travel the map, unlocking the outposts. The ones little little goggles are um, outlook or lookouts, and they unlock uh, things to explore the map, uh, structures to build or secrets to find. Uh, all the while, you get experience points. Right now, I'm level 20 at the top. Now, I did a restart, so I'm not very far. I think level 60 is the max. Uh, but at each level, you get a skill point, and you get a, and then the next level, you get a perk point. So they alternate up until about level 34 or so, and then you you get them sporadically, like only once every three levels or something. Uh, but um, yeah, anyways, here's your skills and your perks. And your skills, there's two different uh, sections, Stalker and Ambush. I'm doing a heavy Ambush build because the dog's out now. Um, and I really like the lure kind of um, the play style. So I'm maxing out um, the collar attraction rates and the uh, who's deer. And I like the extra space here and the uh, spotting info. And I am going to play with the sense. I don't recommend it for a beginner. They're not that useful, but I'm going to fiddle around with it to see. Uh, and then once I get all I want, I'm going to do a few in the, the stalker. But anyways, basically, it's hard to uh, tell someone which ones to pick. Um, this means there's lots of videos on it. You pretty much read them. Take your best guess. If you mess up, you can reset, but it gets pretty expensive. Um... So your XP is up in the corner with your level, and then this is a funny icon for your money, so that's there. Uh, the rest of the menus just map, inventory, skills, perks. Codex is a whole bunch of info, so you can just read through that, uh, learn a whole ton of stuff. Trophy lodges, if you buy the DLC, you can do tr that's kind of neat, you can do that. Uh, the beta hunting club doesn't really work, and then now we got the hunting dog and then the system settings. Uh, so that's kind of a quick rundown on that. On the HUD, you've got your, um, I don't really have a mouse cursor to show you. Yeah, I might be able to get it to work, just a second. Uh, I think my mouse cursor is on record now, I'm not actually sure. Uh, here's your dog status, if that's working. But in the bottom right, there's a compass. Uh, the little green arc is which way the wind's blowing. Uh, that's a very popular thing to know. The animals have the three senses, uh, sight, hearing, and smell. And each... Uh, different species of animals have a different level that some smell better than others and well, not smell better, but you get it. Uh, and <laughs> I'm sure none of them really smell that great. Uh, but there's uh, the eyesight. Uh, some of them have really good vision. Uh, some do not. And then, uh, yeah, and then also hearing. Uh, you'll get to know which animals spook easiest and which ones don't. And yeah, there's, there's a lot to it. It takes a lot of practice and getting used to. Uh, this little area to the right is what, what you have in your uh, on standby to use. A little green bar below that is uh, your health. It can, you can get knocked down by animals and stuff like that. Not a big deal if it runs out. If you get knocked down fully, you just respawn at your nearest tent or your um, outpost. Uh, the little heart symbols just how fast your heart's beating. If you're running around a lot and then you try to steady your weapon while it's beating really fast, you won't be able to steady. Uh, there's some skills and perks that help with that. Um, well, I didn't really show the perks. I showed the skills, but not the 
perks. Uh, so the perks are here. Uh, they're mainly weapons, rifles, handguns, shotguns, archery. Uh, and a lot of them are like cross each other because in the archery you get decreased wobble while moving in aim mode using any weapon. So it's just not for archery. So you kind of have to read through them. A bunch of the rifles help with uh, the rifles, a big popular one to do, not just for using rifle, rifles, but they decrease wobble when aiming uh, using any weapon. And then this one's about holding your breath. Uh, a lot of people like the ranging, the zeroing one, that's a huge one to pick. Uh, you can toggle what your scope's zeroed as. I'm not really sure. I, I kind of like sticking at the 150 range or the default and just kind of learning the bullet drop, but that, that's just a preference thing. It's, it's more difficult that way, but I don't take long shots anyway, so I'm, I mainly do archery and medium range stuff. Uh, but this is all personal preference. You just kind of do your, do your best to pick what you want. Again, you can reset if... Um, if you mess up, it just costs a lot, so keep keep harvesting it and stuff. Uh, so that's the heart. Uh, I'm still hoping my mouse curse is there, but if you look over to the right of the heart, there's a little tiny circle. This is your visibility. If oh, that, that's uh, not uh, needed, that sound. Uh, uh, yeah, so I can't really show you the mouse curse is here, but I'll take that away, and then I can move. Uh, if you're moving, it turns into a big circle. If you, uh, I guess the circle is the biggest. Um, if you stop and crouch, you'll turn into a line. Well, that sort of means heading. It's, it's basically your visibility, how hidden you are. If you lay down and go straight line, if you, uh, if you, one of the tricks you got to learn, well, you don't have to learn, but you learn pretty early. Um, you try and keep your visibility low, and it's at its best when it's a straight line or a gray straight line. And one way to do it is to go into a kind of like a tree or the area of the tree and crouch down. So when you're crouched outside of the tree, you're this um, line with a circle in it. That means you're visible to, I don't know, 20 feet or something like that. Um, I don't actually know the ranges of it, but if you back up um, and go into the tree area, it goes into a line, and that means um, it's only you're only visible for a, a few feet out. Um, no more than 10 anyways. Uh, so one, that's one of the strategies when you're walking around is just kind of pop in one of these little bushes and make sure you get that straight uh, line down here uh, that indicates. So you want to see it again. If I move forward, it becomes a line with a little circle. If I stand up, then it becomes a, a kind of a circle. This means how visible you are. and It's not very specific or clear on exactly. You just kind of get a feel for it as you play. Uh, the thing to the right is your sound. Pretty much you just watch that, how much noise you're making. If you're walking, there's the three little bars there. If you run, it, there's the bars turn red. That just means really loud. And they got a certain range to them, but I don't know that other uh, as well. But if you crouch, you know, it'll go slower, and then you can crouch faster. And it, Anyways, you get it. That's your sound. Uh, so that's the senses that um, the animals can see. So that little green thing on the compass is the wind, so they can smell you. And there's the visibility one and the sound one. Uh, let's see now. So that's kind of the HUD. Um, I guess we should harvest something and go through that screen. So when you start the game, uh, it's um, not the best weapon to start with, but the developers for their last game and this one, they always give you this 243. It's pretty much a deer rifle, uh, but it's a little challenging to use. Uh, so when you go to the outpost, you can find your little uh, cache to access here. Uh, you go inside and then you go to storage and it shows everything you got in menus. It takes a little bit while to set up. I pretty much cleared most of mine out. Uh, but what you want to do is you want to grab your 243 and you want to check your ammo. Now when you s start the game, you start with 243 soft point bullets. Now on the right you'll see statistics for each one. And this is kind of important because there's two different ammo types for most rifles. Uh, you want to try to unlock the polymer tip bullets. you got to gain a few levels before you get them. But the reason why, if you look on the right of the soft point, uh, or the effective range right now is all messed up. Just ignore that. Um, these guns are good out to 300 meters. And anyways, um, penetration drops over distance, but it's a bit too complicated. Uh, what you're looking for is the penetration rating and the expansion rating. Uh, the penetration is how far the bullet will, will penetrate, go into the animal or go through bone. Uh, the expansion is sort of how it sounds like, how the bullet expands upon impact. Uh, it's basically the damage it does um, once, it, once it does the impact. Recommended class is how you, is the, the size of the animal the weapon is designed for to ethically shoot it. And if you are going to get the top trophy rating for the animal you've got to be 
uh, you know, if you shoot an animal that's a class 8 with a 243, you won't get all the points for it. Um, so the 243 is specifically made for a class 2 to 6. It's basically a coyote up to a reindeer or so, uh, but reindeers aren't on the map, but not like a, a larger each deer. Uh, but typically the 243 is used for whitetail and um, blacktail uh, on this map, but it's not the best for the whitetail or even the blacktail. A lot of people end up using it for coyotes and so because it's right at the, it's good to aim at the bottom, the bottom run of it because it's it's nice and powerful for a class two or class three. Uh, so that's important to see if you compare it to the Palmer tip. Remember we have 14 and 17 here. You go over here. We got oh we got. Uh, 30 and 4, so barely any expansion, uh, but a way more uh, penetration from 15, double the penetration. And that's important. You want to go to these because uh, the South Point bullets just they stop too early when you're doing your shot, like they just don't penetrate far enough a lot of the time. And it's very important to get a lung hit, get a vital hit. And a vital hit is basically uh, brain, neck, uh, lung, heart, or liver. Uh, lungs are by far the easiest out of all those, so typically aim for lung shots. Get at least a single lung, you try and get a double lung. To get double lung, you need lots of penetration, so you just use the pol polymer tip, it's more forgiving. Uh, all, rule of thumb is just use the polymer tip. Uh, if you want to experiment, you can you can see the difference when you start using these, but you start the game with the 243 soft point, and go as soon as you can to get the 243 polymer tip, and as soon as you can after that, um, unlock the um, 270 Huntsman here, or the Stradivarius, because uh, then you get the 270 round. Its weapon class is 4 to 8. It's really good for the deer, moose, and elk on this map, and use the polymer tip on it. You won't need another rifle for Leighton Lakes. Um, there's a lot more of the choices. People like all these other ones, and it's all good. But for a beginner, the 270, you can just do that. The 243 is good to train on and practice on. Uh, but you'll find the 270 Palmer tips really good. You, but you can't really take coyotes with it and stuff like that. It's a bit too powerful for them. Well, you can, but you just don't get the full uh, rating. Uh, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to show just a basic loadout. You take your uh, 243 as your starting thing. Now, I got the, I am going to use the Palmer tips. It's a little better for demonstrating and um, just kind of like shot placement. And it's the one you're going to be using most often when you get there. So we'll grab 243. Uh, we will use sights. Now, you start the game with this... Um, Ascent 1x4. Another thing is level up as soon as you can, get the Hyperion. Uh, there's one even more than this, but this is a good middle range one. This one, the first one doesn't have, it only has a 4 times zoom, it's just, it's it's hard to use. Uh, to zoom in close enough to get the key shots. So as soon as you can, I'm going to use that because for a video it's easier to see if I'm zoomed in more where the shot placement is. Uh, and get that one as soon as possible. So, uh, the key thing is 243 polymer tips, and then this scope, and then you try and get that 270, and then the rest is you can just experiment, uh, whatever best kind of the order how you want to get things. Uh, lures, you want to grab a few. Uh, you don't have, you, you start with the bleak collar um, by default. It tells you in the bottom or on the right what it attracts, a white tailed deer and black tailed deer, and mule and seeker are not on this map. Uh, the other ones you can get, uh, I, I'm going to grab elk. Um, you won't have it at the start, but in case I call in. There's a moose one. I'm not high enough level for the moose yet from the reset. Uh, and there's a bear one as well. Now I'll, I'll grab this one for the coyotes. Um, I got what's called the Who's Deer talent. And on, um, I'm going to make sure on this one. I'm pretty sure the Bleak Call can call an elk with Who's Deer. And uh, the Jackrabbit caller for the coyotes. They actually will call in the bears as well. So that's what sort of the, the skills help you. I, I mean, I'm a, I'm a collar build, so it kind of helps that way. You can get multiple animals in with the same same ones, but there is a specific uh, bear collar, and it, it takes a while to figure out which ones will do a lot of experimenting, and a lot of the community still doesn't really know. Uh, but anyway, so that's what I'll bring, but you'll probably just get the bleak call. Uh, you don't really need calls, but it does make it a little easier. Equipment, uh, you don't really need much in there. This is Sentinel Eliminator. You use it when you're upwind, right? Uh, it just helps a bit, but not a whole lot. Oh, doggy biscuits, of course. They're expensive. I don't I use them just for fun. And you start with a standard pair of binoculars. Later on, you can get range finders uh, to... Uh, uh, you know, uh, see what range you're, you're shooting at. So 
Uh, it's important to know that the 243 uh, is zeroed at 150 meters. So if we get our uh, weapons out here, we got to put them in our slots. We'll put that one there. We'll put the ammo 243 polymer tip in it. And we will grab our scope. There we go. And we will... There. So we will get our scope out. So we zoom in there. Uh, wherever that crosshair is, um, so when, when a rifle shoots, the bullet first uh, increases height, so it goes up, like a little bit of arc, and then it drops over a distance. Uh, and when you zero something in, um, the point where it's intersecting and it's falling is where that crosshair is. So uh, it's zeroed at 150, so if something's 150 meters away, the bullet will hit exactly where that uh, crosshair is. If you're closer, the bullet will hit slightly above um, the crosshair point and if they're farther away it'll drop so you got to aim high so if you're really close you aim a little low if you're they're far away you got to aim higher uh, the bullets are fairly flat up to 200 meters 200 meters you just got to aim like a tad bit higher and if you're close you don't really have to aim too much lower it's just, just a little bit like an inch lower so uh, but that's kind of the basic so what we're gonna do probably I guess is I need to show you the trophy harvest screen uh, so I will, I guess, demonstrate a shot placement shot and just kind of go over that screen. So me and Peanut will find something and, uh, yeah, take a look from there. Okay, so I, uh, that's easy. I stepped out of the outpost, like 10 feet, and up on the ledge here, uh, we have a feed zone, uh, for the blacktail. So that's another thing. If you get spotting skills and perks, you can highlight the animal. You can do that. You can see in the top right, you can unlock information about how calm it is, size it is. Uh, there's a level of it. You see where it says two minor. Um, that's sort of how big the animal is. It's kind of like a gauge. They all have different levels. Blacktail goes up to level five. So the biggest ones will be like a level five. Uh, white tail only goes up to level three. Um, and things like that. Moose only goes up to level five. Uh, predators go up to like level 9, and the herbivores pretty much are just level 5s, except for red deer. They go in. It is a little complicated. Anyways, the number means how sensitive it is, like how uh, strong its senses are, uh, but also how big the trophy will be. So this is perfect uh, for a shot placement. So we got a 2 minor black tail buck, we have a doe, and then we have a 2 minor black tail buck. So they'll be roughly about the same size. The trophy rating of a black tail is the antler size. Uh, so what we're going to do is judge the distance. I don't have that rangefinder unlocked. Uh, it is looking to me like they're about 200 out from my experience. Uh, he's going behind this little ledge, so we might be taking this guy. You want the one that's the most broadside, so you can go side three. You sort of have to picture the inside of the animal, like in a little 3D kind of picture, uh, and kind of picture where those lungs are. You get a feel for it once you start seeing um you know, the, the harvest screens uh, gives you a good little indicator of it. Uh, so I guess we'll go for this guy. You want to try and limit how much they're quartering to you, uh, because when they're quartering forward to you like that, there's a shoulder blade, and the shoulder blade can slow down the penetration. Uh, before they start moving too much, we will take a shot. You will be a bit more steady if you crouch, um, as opposed to stand. Not a whole lot, but laying down is most steady, but I got grass on the way, so we'll do a crouch shot. Um, spotting with the scope is a, is a, a skill you learn, uh, so you can highlight them with the scope, not the binoculars. Uh, since it's 200 meters out, you want to aim a little high. I'm, I'm estimating it's probably 180 or something like that. Um, but since it's zeroed at 150, you want to aim a little bit high, and you want to. Since I got a bit of a shoulder blade there, uh, it's going to be a little bit back, more like where the armpit would be, a little leg pit there. Um, but you want to be a little forward because well, uh, this this takes a little little time. Uh, there's the hold breath button. You want to make sure you're holding breath. Uh, when the deer leans down like that, the shoulder blade moves forward. Uh, so a lot of us usually wait till the deer stands upright, and then you can the shoulder blades just kind of forward and out of the way a bit more. Uh, but yeah, he's going to bend down to eat again. When he lifts up again, we'll we'll line up the shot. You see how the leg steps back? The shoulder blade pulls back, and I'm going to aim a little high and hopefully do okay. So it's high. I may have been too high on it. Uh, it's, he stays highlighted for a little bit of time. He's running around. So that's a little higher because I didn't know the exact range of it. Um, I, I think I might have been a little high. I'm not too sure. And if it was 150 out, then I, 
then it would have been too high. But anyways, you kind of get the point. You got to get practice with the rifles, and and it helps when you get um, a range finder so you can specifically see the range. Uh, but that's all part of the game and, and learning it. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to cut the video run up there, and we're going to track them down and see how we did and go over the trophy. Oh, well, actually, before I do that, actually, when we're walking, I'll show you this. Um, on the map, when you zoom in, there's going to be need zones, feed zones, drink zones, rest zones. Uh, you unlock them uh, by just seeing them when they're there or picking up the track uh, when you find one. And in the bottom corner, it will tell you the time that the animals are in the area. So the one we just did is uh, 1.30 to 5.30. Uh, Blacktail will go there. They're not always there, but that is the time you'll find them in the area. So it helps to unlock a bunch of these, uh, so you can sort of scout out, like, get an idea where they are, where they're going to be. Uh, the purple is what's called hunting pressure. Uh, hunting pressure is a little complicated. Um, different weapons create different hunting pressure. Bows create barely any hunting pressure, while rifles create a lot. Uh, typically, so. And you see it down here, there's bright purple, and then there's less purple. This is where I just shot the one and killed the one. Uh, the brighter purple it is, the more hunting pressure it is. If you get it too bright, it will remove your need zones from the map. It's not a big deal, they're still there, they just kind of uh, remove the icon. and it. There's different theories about what it does, but the main one is try to keep your need zones there. However, on some consoles, I don't know if on PlayStation is this, but on the Xbox, getting too many need zones bogged down the system. Uh, so you don't really need them, but that's what they are, and they can help. Uh, oh, I'm almost at the spot here now, so I didn't actually need to cut the video. Um, but you try not to make it bright purple. Uh, if you bow hunt, it's kind of a lot harder bow hunting, but then you don't really have to worry about too much hunting pressure and removing need zones. But that's what those are. Uh, I really got um, lost here on the blood. Actually, it's over here. But that's what the dog's for. So what we'll do is we'll say, uh, hey... The B button's not working. What's going on here? There we go. We're going to tell uh, Peanut to find the blood. She's almost max level tracking, so she should be quick. She runs now when she gets the blood. At the start, they'll walk, but she okay, she just takes off. <laughs> Gone. All right, so we're going to follow her. She's going to find that for me. And, uh, yeah, tracking's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you follow the little glowing lights. Um... The colors will change. There'll be a specific color for the animal you're tracking. Uh, I don't know if she found it or she's just waiting for me. And then the first scale of the tracking tree is a popular one because it expands um, how far you can see the tracks. And it has three levels. Uh, but I, I'm not really going to boost that one because I'm now relying on the dog for most of that. I never liked the tracking. So, this is going to be a bit long of a video, but I think I covered most, except for the trophy, for the trophy window here. Yeah, she's barking there. So let's take a look. Look, um, all the all the professional YouTubers they uh, you know take a look at the deer, and then they they look up at the sky so you can see the trophy, the trophy clear. So we'll do that. There we go. Uh, so the first screen you get the the uh, oh we're gonna have to deal with peanut barking. I didn't stop her barking. Okay. Anyways, she's gonna bark all through this, but what can you do? Uh, the, the first, so the first thing you get is the skeleton image of the of the shot. Oh my God, peanut! <laughs> so down the left is just your basic size. So this is a class four deer. Uh, it's a member of the class of weapon. This is a two to six, so it falls right in the middle. So we got a male. Uh, weight of the deer usually heavier the deer, the bigger the antlers and trophy. Fur types common because there's different rare. A lot of people, you know, the deer can have rare fur variants, which are cool for trophies. Um, tracking distance is zero for some reason. I don't know about that. Difficulty is just the, the, the class member goes up to five, so it's just two. Trophy types antlers. Trophy organ is skull. Um, if you shot it in the skull, oh my god, peanut. If you shoot it in the skull, it will ruin your uh, your trophy score. All right, down here is your trophy rating. If you hover over it, you get the different medals: silver, gold, and diamond. Of what it will score, this is 93, and 76 is silver. So above that is the silver. You get the little medal, but you only get the full medal if you check mark all these little boxes. Woof, woof, woof. Uh, so to get all the check 
boxes off, you need to use the proper ammo. That's the one with the right class. So it's a class four. We used ammo two to six. Uh, you got to hit the animal less than three times, so only two shots used. Uh, you need intact trophy organs. So that's about the skull not being hit. And then you got to at least hit one vital organ. Uh, so that's the list I gave you before. Uh, neck, brain, heart, lungs, liver. Uh, so that's that. The XP cache learn. Session score is just kind of like a, an overall score of what the animal's worth if you're doing like a multiplayer competition. Over here is on the right is your weapon bullet distance. There. See, I guessed 180. It was 168. Pretty good for just throwing it out there. And um, I actually don't know what weapon score is. Anyways, it shows here the actual hit. If you hit multiple times, it'll give you a list. The percentage is how much damage it did. So it did the full damage that killed the deer. So if you look at my shot, I thought it was a little high. Um, it did not drop much because I was I thought it was going to be 180, so it was be a little lower. Um, but I did have to aim high because it's zeroed for 150. It did catch the top of the lung. The spine does not count as vital. Uh, so the lung did check off that box because I did catch it. Uh, but you can see sort of the shoulder bone here. It's kind of hard to see, but the shoulder bone here, how it's forward, it would have leaned back during the lean. But you can sort of see the organs here, so you can kind of get to know them. Uh, on, I think it's a trigger on the console, but it's right-click on um, the computer. You get the actual image of the deer, how it was. And then there's true score info. They all don't have true score, but true score is the randomization of the antlers and the actual measurements on the right. So it gets pretty detailed. I uh, won't we'll go into that, but you can see the how it's actually calculated the score and all that good stuff. Uh, so we accept the harvest, and we will finally stop you from barking. Oh, my goodness. I'll give you a little pet, a little puppy dog. And that is a lot of talking for me tonight. Uh, so, I'm going to seal you. And I think that is about, about it for uh, beginner videos. Um, there's a lot to the game. Um, definitely check out YouTube. All the, all the community resources. Or post a comment, all that sort of stuff. Uh, but yeah, thanks again for watching. And uh, see you next time.